Okay, we're gonna build the train body. This is the most complicated inventor drawing we've done. It's gonna involve some functions we haven't used before. It's kind of a long build and um, it, it may take us a little while. So hang in there and this might be an all day sort of build. So here is the PDF that I've shared that I don't actually think it has enough dimensions on it to pull it off. So this video is gonna be pretty important. So as we go to build this thing, here I'll show you what my build was like that I built a minute ago. Um, we're, gonna, we're going to be able to make it also look like wood or whatever in the end as well. But it's a pretty long build, so let's get it going. So like usual, we'll do a sketch. And we're gonna start with a circle on the origin. And the dimension of that circle in the PDF, it says as a radius of 0.75, so that's obviously a diameter of 1.5. So as we'll hit front to bring it back into scale. And down here it has a rectangle that we're going to make part of the bottom of it. So in order to locate that rectangle, we're going to put a point down here on the y-axis. And this point on the y-axis has a distance from the center of the circle of 1.375. So I'm gonna come up here and go from this point to the center of the circle is 1.375. All right, I'm gonna kinda of back out just a little bit, look at it. Now that point is gonna give me a spot to do a couple of rectangles and I'm not gonna be real picky about them. I am, however, going to make them the same height, let it lock into that the same height. Now, I'm going to dimension these rectangles. Rectangles are a total of two, so each one of them has a width of one. That's pretty close. They both have a width of one, and they have a height of... 0.875 Now notice that that dimensioned both sides of that rectangle because I had them It's called a driven dimension because I purposely made this one match up to that one, but now we're in pretty good shape uh, We have the, the bare minimum of, of it. We're gonna have to do some trimming. So let's do a bunch of uh, dimension deletes so that it doesn't interfere with that. I'm going to get rid of them all to start with because it's just quicker to do it all at once. So now we're going to use the trim function right up here. And there's a lot of this we don't need. We don't need anything on the inside of here at all. Um, hmm, that might be what we need right there. So this is the profile of the front of our train. So I'll finish that sketch and click on home and there it is. Now we're going to extrude this clear to the back of the train and do some different things later to it, but that's where we're at. We're ready to extrude this profile. And I want to go the other direction. So I'm going to go this direction right here and I'm still going to keep it in a extrude mode, but it is going to go back there 5.5 inches. And we are now have the barrel, so to speak, of the train going. Now we have to be systematic because there's a lot going on. There's holes on the front, the sides, the back, uh, on the top too. So we're just gonna work front to back to cover it all. So I am gonna work on the front part of this and I'm gonna put a sketch on here. And on the sketch, I need to place some points in order to put some holes. Now, I don't know where these points are going, but I'm gonna plop one here. And I don't, this one over here, I'm gonna maintain that dashed line. So they're gonna stay the same height and that might save me some dimensions in a minute. I also need a point that is gonna be right on the Y axis. And um, I need to dimension these points to put them in the right spots. And these, these points, um, 
are, are going to be relative to the sides a certain distance and relative to the bottom a certain distance. It's really important we get both of those dimensions in. So from the point to the bottom, first of all, it is point 0.125. Now that didn't bring them both down, I hoped it would, but no big deal, I guess. I thought I had them set up so they'd be driven and dimensioned, but they didn't. 0.125 there. And I, I have them how far up from the bottom, but now I have to get um, how far they are in from the side. Now, um, I have that on my drawing as from there to there. Oops, I didn't grab it for some reason. Try it again. From there to there. This dimension is, oops, I lost it, uh, 0.375. And likewise, over here, the same thing from the point to the edge is 0.375. All right, so these are dimensioned how far relative to the bottom and relative to the side, and that's what I need to do. This one, this point up here is centered, however, I do need to set how high it is. And from the bottom, um, there's a lot of stuff going on, quite honestly. It's hard to find exactly the dimension in this mess, but it's 0.625. So from the point to the bottom, 0.625. All right, so I have all my points set up and so I can finish my sketch. And we're going to make each of these points be a hole. So up here, and it's either under hole or thread, depending on what you use last. But on hole, uh, th this is just a hole. It's just a place where the cow catcher is gonna go that we're gonna build tomorrow, actually. It's not threaded or anything. And so the top, it is a tapered hole, and this shows it right here, it's a tapered hole. So it's like that. It's not nearly this deep. It is, in fact, has a diameter. So this is our diameter. Uh, oops, I have it in there, but it's 0.125, and it also has a depth of 0.125, and it looks like I have both those in there because I just built this train a minute ago, so I'm at a slight advantage here. So that, and it's picked up on all three of the holes, it's guessed that, and it's right. Um, so I'm kind of going over it, it's um, got a distance, that depth, that diameter, uh, rechecking in the diagram, it all looks good. Um, do a little bit of looking at it, and yeah, it's, it looks like it's okay. It has the holes there. So I'm, I've now done the front, and I want to systematically move around this train. So I am going to do a sketch now on this side over here. Now over on this side, I have two holes. So the way I generally locate a hole is I, is I plop a point or two. The only thing I want to do is kind of get them on the same height. It might save me some time in a minute. I have two points, and now I need to dimension. I need to, it's called locate those points. So I'm going to locate those points. From the point to there, it is one. And it is the same thing from this point to the back of the train it is one. All right, so they are located as far as how far at the back. I don't, however, yet have them located up from the bottom. And up from the bottom, these points are, sometimes it doesn't grab, whoop, I don't know what I did wrong. Dimension from that point to that bottom. It is a half inch up, it is 0.5. And it didn't do it to them both, so I'll have to make sure I dimension them both. 0.5. So now I have the holes dimensioned both um, how high up and how far back they are, and I can finish this sketch. These holes, so I'm going to go back over and orient on the side. Um, these holes, now, I'll leave it here. These holes are threaded holes. They're a quarter inch, 20 UNC. Um, and they're actually only 0.875 deep. And they're threaded because we built a, uh, what was it called? 
I believe it's called an axle peg earlier. That's a threaded peg or, or bolt that goes into these. So these are going to be under the hole function. Um, and so it's still a hole, but we're gonna choose as we look through this stuff right over here, this third one in is a threaded hole. And so now we're gonna have to pick the specifics of this threaded hole. So this is a quarter, there it is. And it's guessing, do I want quarter 20 UNC? Yes, I don't know if you remember from our previous build, but that's what we made that bolt that goes into this. So obviously this is the receptacle where that goes in, so this has to match up. Um, it's gonna say, what kind of distance do you want? The depth of these is 0.875 and how far the thread goes um, we're gonna make the thread go down to 0 0.8 so the threads gonna go just barely off of, of uh, the distance and we could make it threaded the whole way um, yeah let's make it threaded the whole way actually so let's let's see if it'll take that 0.875 thread it the whole way and this is okay, that's okay. I'm trying to see if there's anything amiss here. And it all looks good, so I'm gonna say okay. Now, if you look closely, you can see that it's a threaded hole. Um, and glance at both. Yeah, it, it, it worked out pretty good. So now I have threaded holes. So I have to do the same thing the other side. So let's grab it, turn it around. And we need threaded holes on this side. Now, kind of a cool deal. We have to start a sketch on here, but it's gonna try and line me up. So if I grab my point tool and I hunt around, there it is. There's that hole on the far side. And there's that hole on the far side. So these are located and these are gonna match up and that worked out great. So I can just hit finish sketch and I'm gonna do a hole and now it, it, I just did all this stuff, so it's guessing I want to do the same thing again, and it's right. I glance through and make sure it's quarter inch, quarter 20 UNC, threaded, it's all good. So it makes the, the second set of holes pretty fast. And you can see when you zoom in, it is right. All right, so I'm gonna orient again. Here's the front, here's the side. Um, now I got to do something that's quite tricky, at least for somebody like me. I have to put a hole in the top of this, and this is the first time we've ever addressed putting a hole in a surface that is not flat. And it's hard to draw a sketch on a surface that's not flat in Inventor. Well, it's not really hard, it's just that there's a certain way to do it. What you have to do is you have to put a plane, there's going to be a hole in the top, about right there and it's a half inch hole it's what our smokestack goes into and when you want to draw a sketch and so i'll hit start 2d sketch it picks all these planes to draw on but it will not pick the curved surface to draw on so we have to put a flat surface to draw on here so i i am going to go up here to plane and the plane i want to do needs to be tangent tangent to a surface and parallel to a plane because I'm going to make it parallel to a plane down below. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to say tangent to this surface parallel to this plane. And the, it drew a plane on top of here that I am going to put a sketch on. So I'm going to now go start a sketch. I'm going to select this plane. It's called a work plane. And I am going to put a hole up here, but in order to do that, I'm going to grab a circle. I'm going to center it on the y-axis, um, and I'm going to come out with it, and I'm going to dimension the circle, and then I'll locate the circle in a second. Circle's a, I, the smokestack that's going to go down in there is a half inch, so this has diameter 0.5 now I have to locate that in the right spot and from the center of the circle to the front of ooh, did that do it 
don't think it did. So dimension from the front to the center, there we go, is point eight seven five. All right, so that's where it is. And I'm gonna end up making a little hole there in a minute, but I'm gonna finish my sketch. Now this plane, I'm gonna make disappear in a minute because it's hard to deal with, but I'll have to remember that. Um, but we're gonna do an extrude, and it kind of guess which one, but the wrong direction, obviously. But this time I'm gonna use the second one down, and it's actually, if you hovered on it, it says it's the cut. And we're gonna cut. And we're gonna cut, not very deep actually, this hole, um, it's only a quarter of an inch deep. It doesn't seem deep enough to me. I'm a little worried about that. Um, we're gonna make it deeper, executive decision. So uh, the distance that we're going to make this, uh, let's make it a half inch deep. So it's going to go down through there and I'm going to mess around. Uh, something looks a little funny about it. It's going to go direction two, cut, profile. Um, I think it's okay. So now I'll say okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it looks like it cut it fine. And so now I have a hole cut in, so I'm trying to methodically work front to back, take care of all the features on this part. Um, I'm, I'm done with that plane for now, so I'm gonna right click on the plane, and it gives me some different options, um, one of which is something about height or something like that. Uh, I can't see it, oh, there it is, visibility. I don't wanna see it, so I just unchecked visibility, so that plane's not, messing with me how it looks there now. So that was visibility. Right clicked on the plane, found visibility. All right, what do I have left to do? Um, no, I gotta go clear to the back now. So let's go clear to the back. And, oh, that messes with me, so I want it upright. So back here, we're gonna put this, uh, a big cab, I guess it is. It's the engineer's cab back here. And so, I'm gonna kind of orient this about how I need it. And this big old cap, it comes up even with this, um, but has a rounded top. And so I'm gonna actually deal with the rounded top first and then put in the square side second. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start a sketch on this plane. I'm gonna locate a point on the Y axis and Escape that so I can dimension where that point is. There's a big old arc that comes off of a point. I'm actually kind of lost for a second here. Um, it is 0.375 from the bottom. So it's on the middle line and it is point three seven five from the bottom now that gives me a point to do a great big old circle now this great big old circle is largely going to go away in a minute but i'm just going to click it out here and dimension it this circle is has a radius of 2.35 so it's 2.35 times 2 for a diameter and there's there it is now obviously that's not all going to be there we're going to have to trim that up in a minute but there's a rectangle that if I click on this corner lock into this other side and let it lock into the edges of that circle and click that is going to give me my profile I'm looking for now. I got to trim a bunch of stuff, so let's go ahead, escape, click on some dimensions and delete them so that it will let us do all this business. 
trim off what we don't need. I don't need this. I don't need that. Um, hmm, I need the rest of it. So I just need this part right here. That looks good. So I'm going to finish my sketch. So give myself a little bit of an angle here. I'm going to extrude this profile forward towards the front of the train. So this is the back of the train. I'm going to extrude this profile forward. So it gets the wrong distance. So I'm going to push it this other way. And this extrusion goes forward um, 1.75 inches. So let's, let's see if I've got that. Yeah, I've actually got that in there. It's going forward 1.75. And, it, and it's got a couple of things going on. I gotta make sure it's, it's uh, going that direction, that it is a solid. Um, maybe I have it. I'm gonna click it and see what, it, whoa, something went wrong. Control Z, that dude. So it's extruded again, going, that direction. I'm missing something here. I'm not sure what. Um, join. Oh, I got to join right there. Now it's going to join this one to that one before it was cutting that. So I need to join it. Join. So it's join and going that direction. And it has the right dimension in there. Okay, cool. Now we got that part on there. So let's look at what we have. We have, we're getting pretty close really. So we've got to do a couple things to this. Um, trying to still stay methodical on it. I built the back end. I've got some holes in the back. That would probably be intelligent to uh, put these holes in the back end right now. So these holes, um, actually there's just one hole in the back end. So I'm gonna start a sketch the sketch is where the hitch peg would go. Um, just a side thought, some of you, as we do our individual design challenges coming up, we gotta figure out something we wanna design and it could be any number of things. Um, some people are talking about things like uh, spotting scope mounts for their smartphones and different things. But you might also have to consider an idea of building additional train cars and designing them. So. Um, but this is for the hitch peg that would pull an additional train car. Um, so I'm going to put a, I can't remember, did I start a sketch already? I'm going to start a sketch. Talking too much. Uh, control Z. Start a sketch on this back end. And no, no, no. Create a sketch, yeah. And so I'm going to plop a point down on the Y axis and then dimension where that point is from there to there. Oops, didn't grab it somehow. From there to there. And this point is 0.375 from the bottom. 0.375 from the bottom. And um, it's on the center, so it's dimension relative to the side. All right, so I'll finish that sketch. And we're gonna make a hole. Now this hole is gonna be this one right here but it's gonna be a regular hole. It's not gonna be threaded or tapped as they call it. It's gonna, it's gonna be a simple hole and it's going to go right here and we need it um, to have a diameter of 0.25. We need it to have a depth of a half inch. There's a simple hole, diameter 0.25, depth of a half inch. Okay, all right. So I think we have the hole in the back end for the hitch peg. Yeah, looks good. So we're getting close. Now what we have to do is let's go over to the side and we are gonna blow a curved hole in the side here. Um, so the way we're gonna do that is we are going to do a sketch on this side and it's going to be a curved hole and so it's going to be part of a circle so I'm going to locate a point 
somewhere in here that's going to help me locate this circle. All right, so from the bottom of the train, this center of the circle, which is just a point right now, oops, didn't let me grab it that time, is 1.75, 1.75, all right? And from the edge of the back, to, to, let's see, I don't know what I just grabbed. I know I need to grab from that point to that, it's pretty darn close to the edge, actually. It is 0.25. So I've got a little point there that I'm going to throw a circle on. So I'm going to grab the circle. It's going to be a circle here. It's not huge. Um, I dimension it here. The circle. It lets me. There we go. The circle has a radius. A 0.5 so it has a diameter of one all right so there's my circle however I want from right here where the, the top of the circle is it goes straight out so what I need to do is put a little rectangle on this circle so I'm gonna go mm, I'm gonna start my rectangle directly below the center it's got a dashed line to show me it is on the edge of the circle and I'm gonna come up and I'm going to go out to the edge here. Now I kind of can't tell what I'm doing very well. There. Bam. Like that. And now I've got to do a little bit of get, getting rid of whoa, some dimensions. Oh, I can do some trimming. Seems to be like we do a lot of that. All right, so I need to trim off um, this, this, that little arc there, that little arc there, this, and this. And this is the shape, oop, and I don't need that through there. Okay, so this is the shape that I'm gonna cut out right there. So I'm gonna finish that sketch. And come over here and extrude, except for I'm going to choose um, this profile. If I hover it, I'm going to choose cut. I want to get a little bit of an angle on it so I can see what it's doing. And quite honestly, I don't care if I'm going to go distance. I'm going to go to next. So it's just going to cut to the next edge. And that'll take it clear through. And I think it's cut out, fine. Yeah, it's cut out now. So I am really close to done now. Um, when I look at this, I have holes on the front, the back, the sides, the top. I am built, except for I'm gonna do a little bit of dressing. Um, I need to have what is called a fillet on all these edges to make them smooth to look better. It's kind of like you sanded it down after you cut it out. So I'm gonna come over here to fillet. And the fillet I want to use is actually 0.1. That's a radius of 0.1. And I am gonna take every edge except holes and do a fillet and that's it's, you got to be a little bit methodical on that too. So I'm going to work front to back and try and get a fillet on every edge as I go, including that, that little spot right there, that little spot there and up around, not the holes. All right, I think I've got everything on this side. So now I need to turn it around. And that kind of messes with me to have it at a weird angle.
Hmm, maybe? And come back and pick them up later if I, oh, 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 there's one right there. And one right there. Makes me wonder if I didn't get that one over on this side. Yeah, I did. So the bottom looks good, front, this side. If I did miss one, I'll come back and pick it up in a minute. But I think I have all my fillets done. So I'll hit the green arrow. And now it's a nice smooth um, train. So we're gonna do one more thing to this train body just to make it look a little better. We're gonna go to tools and select a material to make the train out of. Now you can do any number of things. And this is alphabetical over here. I picked a walnut on the other one, but I don't want to do the same thing twice. Ooh, that looked kind of good. Cherry looks good. I might do something a little bit different though. What about bronze? Nah, ooh. I don't know, you just sort of con you work through their concrete. That's kind of cool. You can pick anything you want for your train. And I already did a walnut, so I'm going to do something different. Just because, oh, kind of like, nah, I'm having a rough time figuring it out. But obviously there's a lot of options here. And I'm going to go with silver. Oops, I forgot to say okay, didn't I? So material. Something's oddball here. All right. Well, I'll let you mess around with it. Something's kind of up with it right there. And I'm not sure what happened. So anyway, we've got the train built. I won't waste your time while I play around with making it a certain color. Looks like we're good to go. And um, that was like a half hour build. So, but we have the train body built now.